Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, my guest is Lieutenant Governor Doug Chin. We will discuss the recent events that have shaped the current political and social environment in Hawaii and the mainland United States, and Lieutenant Governor Chin's outlook for the future of our state and our nation. The last time Doug Chin was my guest on Law Across the Sea, he was Hawaii's Attorney General, and he was leading the litigation against President Trump's travel ban on predominantly Muslim countries. A lot has happened since then. Among other things, Doug Chin ran for Congress. He became Lieutenant Governor of the State of Hawaii after Sean Tsutsui resigned. There were several notorious events that have highlighted divisions in America. And midterm elections became a battleground over the president's performance. In fact, it seems like every day there are new events that affect our country and our state. And I've asked Doug to come and talk to us about them. So Doug, welcome. Good to see you. Hi there, Mark. Thank you very much for having me on the show. You have had a remarkable uh, few years here. Uh, yes, it has been very eventful. <laughs> and so I think I'll, I'll, yeah. start, I'll start with a non-controversial question. Okay, okay. So what do you think of the midterm elections? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll talk about it first nationally and then, yeah, and then locally. I yeah. mean, I mean I, I, nationally, I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious that you, you've gotten a lot more uh, uh, different pockets of the population that are engaged, uh, that are really thinking about what's happening to the country. Uh, particularly when it comes to the younger generation, but I think also different minorities that are realizing that uh, if, if they need to fight for the values that they believe in, then they have to make sure that they show up and vote. Um, so by seeing the House get taken over to such a huge extent by the Democratic Party and, and then to see some of the close votes that took place nonetheless in, in so many other places, uh, I think we are seeing um, you know, a trend where, where people are really starting to sit up and take notice. Um, now, let me just talk about Hawaii a yeah, little bit, please. because I, I think one of the interesting things about for all of us living in Hawaii is that for so long, maybe this is just me, but for so long, you, you almost could feel a little bit disinterested in what was happening in federal government or in Washington, D.C., um, maybe just me, but 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 I but well, I think that I think that's an accurate feeling, yeah. But I think with everything that that's happening and with um, you know, with the the current president just you know saying as many things as he does and taking center stage on so many controversial issues um, that really go against I think what a lot of people here believe, uh, it, it really has injected uh, that that same kind of concern that that exists around the U.S. Uh, here and to Hawaii. Um, now, maybe it doesn't show up so much in our, our local elections because the Democratic Party really has such a stronghold here. Um, and so, in many ways, election day in the, in the state was probably uh, fairly straightforward. I mean, especially once we got, we got past the primaries. Um, but I think overall, you have a lot of people who are not just thinking about what's happening right here in, in Honolulu or, or around the rest of the state, but also thinking about um, what's happening around the country, because what ha what's happening in the country, it impacts us as well. So you, you think there's been a turnout uh, nationally of yeah. people that, well, okay, what are the concerns? What are the national concerns? What, oh. what, what, is, what are the social and political issues that are affecting us, in, in your opinion? Right. Well, you know, actually, so I'll, I'll start with the one that's, um, that's less emotional, but I think uh, that is really important to people, and that just has to do with health care and, and people's, uh, just people getting um, adequate medical care. Um, so I, I think one of the things that you saw was that there were a lot of red states, a lot of Republican states, that are now uh, very interested in either passing legislation that, that calls for a greater government spending on health care, not less, um, and then, and then, really, you see within the Democratic Party uh, a lot more talk about um, single payer coverage, uh, health care for all. Um, that that's that's a very big trend that that's taken place. That's not not, not necessarily wait, I, it is social justice, but I, but it's it's more um, just kind of the nuts and bolts of what's impacting us day after day. And, and it seems a bit of a change from the Republican position prior 
to the election where oh yeah yeah right yeah oh absolutely and, and I think even in the last couple uh, the last couple weeks you saw a lot of Republican candidates having to backtrack on things that they'd said before and really say no we, we do care about um, people's uh, pre-existing health conditions um, which is a big deal, I think, for for a lot of people because we all have pre-existing health conditions. Oh, frankly, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's you know, I think I think once you open the door to uh, to saying you're you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna cover pre-existing health conditions, then bottom line, that that's a that's a, impacting all of us. Um, so I, okay. I think you had that social justice. Uh, it, you know, it's it, I, I think that one of the things that I, I got very involved in, but I, I think got really uh, um, exaggerated to uh, to a large degree, is has to do with uh, immigration, and and uh, and I think that um, exaggerated meaning that I, I think that the Republican Party and President Trump really tried to do as much as they could to to really turn that into uh, this this very. Um, threatening kind of issue, you know, just, I mean, everything that we were hearing about the um, a migrant caravan, you right. know, coming towards towards Mexico and an invasion coming to the U.S. and, and even as we speak, 15,000 troops being deployed out there. Of course, I haven't heard so much border. about it recently since exactly. the midterms. Right, right, right. That, so it seemed like a big scare tactic that, that's I come see. up in order to be able to whip people up into, a, you know, whip people on to, to go out and vote, uh, maybe on President Trump's side, it was to try to whip up more people on the um, in the red states to make sure that they voted. But I, I think it also got a lot of people um, who were thinking that they wanted to support Democratic principles uh, to vote as well. And uh, I think that you saw that in the, the results of the election. And so, is our country divided? I mean, are we? Is, is that what's happening? Or in your opinion? I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think so. And and, and I'm saying that just based upon my own. Um, like even my own first-hand experience, that yeah. I, I think you really see this trend away from uh, people saying, "Okay, let's be let's be in the center, let's be in middle road, let's try to be moderate in things." To uh, frankly, just a, a lot of push towards the, the extreme ends as a way to be able to galvanize people for their support or to get people to vote. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think that's actually a really interesting comment on that. I think you know, other people. Later on in our futures, we'll we'll look back at 2018 and and uh, and just this this decade and uh, and just see how much um, just populism and and kind of appeals to emotion and to fears and to anger uh, is is really what what has driven a lot of people to uh, you know, take very extreme positions in, in how they they view things. The last time you we, we were here talking, uh, you were the attorney general, correct, of the state of Hawaii. And uh, we talked about the Muslim ban then, and you were leading the litigation against it. And what, what happened on that case? What came out of it? And what, what is right. your involvement in that case meant sure. to you? Sure. U.S. Supreme Court came back with a 5-4 a decision that, uh, that uh, um, basically favored uh, President Trump's decision to be able to issue the executive order that, um, that banned people from these Muslim-majority nations. And, and essentially, uh, and, and people might dispute, other people on the other side might dispute how I'm just characterizing that, but, but bottom line, uh, the five-person majority uh, Pre-Kavanaugh, I should say, the, the five-person majority um, really gave a lot of deference to the, the president's ability to to be able to play in the, the immigration space, um, which is uh, you know it's it it says a lot about about where we're at right now. Um, but in the meantime, you had a you had a four-person dissent uh, that that wrote to my in my opinion a, a very compelling uh, dissent. I, I truly believe that people are going to again look back on this time. And, and say that this was a, a wrong decision, that, that you know, when the writing was clearly on the wall that we were doing something that's very discriminatory. Well, well, what, what, what does the majority decision allow? I mean, what does it specifically allow now, at this right. point in time? Well, it, it, gives, the, it gives the president uh, a lot of deference in terms of his ability to be able to ban people from entering the, the U.S. if he wants to, to the point that it overlooked a lot of what I think to Many of us, including myself, uh, what, what a lot of us looked at as just blatant discrimination. Um, and, and so bottom line, you, you always had that balance. I think I might have described that the last time on the show. You're kind of balancing out you know, what's the president's powers uh, to be able to you know, so-called protect our national security versus um, what's the Constitution say about discriminating against people. 
And clearly the five people on the majority, they, they weighed it in favor of uh, the president's powers. Uh, when I think a lot of us would say, look, you got to check the uh, president in, in what they're able to do. So there, so there you go. It, and it gives the president a lot, a lot of leeway, it sounds like. Sure. What I hear you saying. Sure, it does. Now, did, did anything positive come out of that case for, for um, you, you know, personally oh, and, um, and, and professionally right, and, right. and uh, on the law? Right, 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 right. Mm. Well, okay. If, if I mean, so let's, if I take it philosophically, then, yeah, then, yeah. And, and just think about that. I, I, I think one of the greatest blessings about being able to be part of the, this this case and and just uh, being able to see uh, all the people who are involved with it is just to see how much attention has been placed on on really our our faulty immigration laws and and the fact that uh, we really all need to be doing a better job of being able to pass laws uh, either through Congress or, or, well, really through Congress, but, but we also need to be electing executives like the president who, who are going to be able to uh, really have a clear vision of what it means to be an American in the next, uh, in the next generation. And uh, I think what we have right now, uh, in my opinion, is, is uh, a president and an administration that's very, um, that's very closed, uh, that, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that that really appeals to uh, uh, kind of a nationalist mentality that that favors uh, favors one you know race over uh, over other races, and uh, I think that's kind of dangerous. But but uh, but I, I think the better value that that many of us stand for is one that is inclusive and and that really believes in the value of of immigrants and and what they can actually add to and and bring to the complexity of the the great. Uh, national fabric that we call the United States, and and so um, so I, I think that's where the the battle line is going to be drawn. So when I look at it from the long view, I, I mean I, I I think that that immigration laws, uh, I think even you know like mutual colleagues of ours will will say that that's always been problematic throughout U.S. history. It, right. it always has, right. Right. frankly. Right. Um, repeatedly. But, right, repeatedly. repeatedly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's, and so, um, and, and, and so that you're always going to have that kind of, you know, policy decision of, you know, how do we treat people who are coming in from, from other, yeah. uh, from other parts of the world? And, 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 so, and also how do we protect our national security, frankly, just in fairness. I mean, okay. how, do, how do we make sure that we're, okay. we're taking care of all of those things? So we need a balance. Um, we okay. do, oh, of course, of course. And, and so, um, you know, I think closing the borders, I, I think, you know, uh, making, making um, uh, statements that, that, uh, that either dehumanize uh, people who are coming from other countries or, or uh, denigrates them or, or makes them seem like they're less than human. I, I just think uh, all of those things are, are just very dangerous for the U.S. and dangerous for all of us who are minorities who, who've had to live through well, discrimination. Well, we're all kind of minorities in a way, yeah. uh, especially here in Hawaii. Um, now, before we take our break, we, we have about a minute left. Uh, what is the reaction that you felt when you've been, gone out over to the mainland and people say, hey, I think that's the guy oh. that was leading this, <laughs> this fight. Is it, yeah, yeah. You get pros and cons and... Uh, so overall, I, I think what happens is that I, I think if people disagree with me, they probably keep it to themselves. I, I, okay. if, I mean, if I got to be honest. I, I don't. I don't think I've actually had that much criticism, other than maybe you know people who write anonymously or write on social media or, or say something. But but if you're asking me what do people say to my face, the uh, vast majority is I mean wherever I've gone through the country, um, it, it's been really uh, just very encouraging. And mm. to me. Even losing and 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 losing the the case, you know, as it turns out, uh, to me, it, it just really encouraged me to see how many people were actually galvanized because of this case and and are really now caring about the issue and and um, caring about immigration. So I hear you saying, and maybe it was the start of something. It yes. was something that right. maybe pushed a button. Right. And, right. And and now we're seeing a lot of the reaction. Right. Or or an example of I think the long fight for social justice, which is it's constantly this. It's constantly you're pushing up against an edge. Uh, there's a little bit of a pushback, but but it's not as bad as before, and, and progress continues that way. So um, so to me, I, I take uh, encouragement from that. And I hear you saying it's a long fight. It is. It's and, a long fight. And and so okay, we're going to take a short break. Okay. Right now and come back and we'll ask a few more questions and I want to talk a little bit about Hawaii too. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. So we'll be right back with Lieutenant Governor Doug Chen. Minasan konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de otodake suru. Konnichiwa Hawaii. 
の日本語放送のホスト国末ゆかりです各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています日本語コミュニティハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組ですこんにちはハワイ各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てくださいホストの国末ゆかりでしたアロハ Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. We are back with Lieutenant Governor Doug Chin, and we are talking about recent developments in the law, in society, in politics, and.、Uh, Uh, Doug Chin, it's a pleasure to have you here. And thank, thank you for talking with us and、yeah. being very open about your feelings and your opinions, and that's fine.、Uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened、yeah. in the last few months. Uh, uh, we had an assassination、uh, of Mr. Koshogi,、uh, and we've had、uh, um, pipe bombs sent to Democrats,、mm -hmm. and we've had.、Uh, Some、uh, people in a synagogue killed some, because they were Jews. And、uh, there's been criticism somewhat of the president about that.、Mm -hmm. um, what do those events tell you? And、uh, what, you know, does the president have any responsibility <laughs> sure.、Uh, for that? And our, 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 I mean, his freedom right, of speech,、right. he can say whatever he wants. Right, right, right. Sure. What are, sure. What are your thoughts、uh, on all of that? Yeah, of course, the president can say whatever he wants.、Uh, it, it is a free speech. I, I, I look at it more as a leadership issue. I mean, so everything I was ever taught growing up, whether it was from my parents or, or professors or mentors,、uh, is really leadership starts at the top. And, and it really starts with being able to set a tone、um, that impacts everybody who's. who's Underneath you, essentially. But, but uh, uh, you know, I, I think for the person who is the, the leader of the free world, I mean, whenever you have、uh, tragic events like this,、uh, it, it's, it's very important to be able to、uh, set the right tone,、uh, to be able to have words,、um, sincere words、uh, of healing,、uh, words of unity,、um, and, and ones that, that are able to bring people together. And I think what's, what's difficult is, is that I, I think now in today's age,、um, especially you saw it not just from the president, but then even from people who are running in other elections around the country, is that the, there's a lot,、uh, a lot less taking responsibility for things and a lot more just、um, pushing back and, and just snarking back you know, at, the, at the other side,、um, which is, people will say, the loss of civility. I mean, it's, and, but but I, I think that's a genuine problem because I think what it does is it, It, it then starts having a rhetoric that starts appealing to、uh, fringe groups and emotional、uh, pe people who are going to be able to、um, behave in violent ways that, that have resulted in, in what we've seen. A lot do you think that, it, you think that encourages、place. them to,、oh, yeah. to take action? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, I think what, what's been identified is, is a lot of,、um, we always call it dog whistles, you know, just a, a, lot, of, a lot of statements that are made. Um, that, that、uh, appeal to、uh, a certain kind of rhetoric that, that previously you never heard a, a president talk about. So, so like,、uh, you, know, when, you know, when the president you know, refers to people who are coming from,、uh, from Mexico or Central America you know, as, as people like that, everyone, every single one of them is a criminal.、Um, there could be Middle Easterners in, you know,、uh, amongst them, there could be terrorists that are in, fr in front of them. Um, that's not really what's in, the, you know, in, in this group of people that are making their way to the US.、Um, but just by saying things like that,、uh, I think it appeals to、uh, a lot of the conspiracy theorists out there, the people who, are very,、uh, who, who feel very galvanized then to, to take action. And unfortunately, there's people who take action in violent ways. And do those actions epitomize what's happening in the United States? Are they. Are they Examples 
of the divisions in our country? Oh yeah, right I, I mean, I think the, that's a very serious sign mm -hmm. of, of what we see happening right now. And, and I think all of us, you know, any of us who are in public service, um, that's actually a big challenge that, that all of us have to face. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny, because I, I, I will feel that temptation now, you know, where, where you, you, you mm. hear this, you hear if, you know, if the president is gonna push back and, and say something, you know, I mean, here I've been taught to always be civil, always be classy, you know, frankly, you know, mm. you know always just be fair and everything. Um, I'll feel tempted to just say mm. something that's very obnoxious back, because you just think, well, that's the only way that people are gonna hear you and, and listen. Um, that's not the right lesson, and I resist that lesson because I just don't think it's 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 not right. Um, but I, I think that that's what if you know I feel it. So I, I can only imagine that that other people who are also in public service also feel the same thing. Okay, we're going to switch gears a little okay. bit. Uh, what are the biggest issues facing Hawaii? And how, you know, I'd like to learn Great. a little bit about what you've done as lieutenant governor and sure. what you've learned from being lieutenant governor. So first Correct. of all. What are we facing for the okay, future here sure. in Hawaii? I, I felt like I learned a lot as a lieutenant governor. It was great. It was a, such a great blessing to be able to uh, serve in that capacity. Uh, Senator Josh Green, Dr. Josh Green is now coming in. He'll be taking office on December 3rd. Uh, I just saw him an hour ago, and, and uh, it, it, he's going to do a, a fantastic job. Um, I, I was able to see this. I, I mean, I think we've got an economy that's booming right now uh, that, that's largely based on, on tourism um, and, and our hotel industry. Uh, we need to be able to expand our economy to basically support two other um, two other legs of the stool. You know, as, you know, we only have one leg of a stool right now. So one of them would be uh, renewable energy, and that's really seen by the the governor's initiative to to really try to be make us some 100% uh, dependent on renewable energy by 2045. But I think the other thing that was important that I got involved with as lieutenant governor had to do with agriculture and really uh, trying to uh, restart our mm, agriculture yeah. industry now that pineapples and, and bananas are, are no longer a, a feeder crop or a sustaining crop. Um, and, and really, it's agriculture that is sustainable, that, that is able to uh, help us to be able to uh, feed ourselves rather than re rely upon shipping from, from the mainland. So the way I got involved with that was um, this started with Shansen Sui, my, my predecessor, but I, we were able to expand it to Oahu this year. Um, it was this farm to school initiative, which was essentially bringing in fresh local produce, fresh local meat uh, into the schools and having the schools start to, to use that to be able to feed, uh, to feed lunches, to feed the kids with their school lunches, um, instead of relying upon canned food that came from the mainland um, that's been sitting on a shelf for several weeks that just gets dumped out into a tray. Uh, very unappetizing, um, has no educational connection to the, the land that's in front of us. Um, and, and so the, the opportunities of being able to get the school, uh, the Department of Education to shift uh, towards, uh, towards relying upon fresh locally produced uh, and local um, Local foods like breadfruit or, or uh, you know, or uh, bananas or, or uh, you know, papaya, things like that. Um, that makes such a huge difference in terms of being able to be more nutritional, um, but also teaching the kids that what they're eating is something that was grown here, that they've grown here, and and I think that's a very special connection. Now, I also read that you were in charge of developing the plan for Mauna Kea, and sure. you know, there has been protests up there and. Uh, I think we see both sides of that, and what, what's going to happen there? What's what? What did you? What what are the plans, and right. how would you like to see that well, develop and work out? So I, I think the biggest thing that happened uh, in the last couple of weeks is that the Hawaii Supreme Court has now ruled that that you know, and I think that that was something that people. Uh, we're really waiting for uh, whether it's uh, whether it's people who were against building a telescope on, on Mauna Kea or whether it's the people who were supporting the the building of the telescope and and uh, the, uh, the the de commissioning of the the other ones in order to make way for this one. Um, so I, I, I think what's happening is the Hawaii Supreme Court has ruled that the, the permit can go forward. Um, and so with that, uh, this is a this is an opportunity for. Um, for the state to, and, the, and frankly, for the, the Hawaii Island uh, to be able to uh, really be able to move forward in, in terms of um, potentially building something that's going to make a big difference in terms of space exploration and um, build more STEM jobs that, that come into the state. Um, 
So I, I have a little bit of a bias toward, towards uh, towards see, wanting to see the telescope uh, be, being built. Uh, but frankly, I, I always knew that we needed to wait for the Hawaii Supreme Court to, to rule before we, we knew what would come next. And is there a way to bring bring people together? Is there, uh, is there a way that we can right. all appreciate each other's differences and yet still right. follow what the Supreme Court says? Right. So I, I would say this. I, I, you know, my own sense of it is, is that I think there are certain people who, even with the Hawaii Supreme Court ruling the way that it, it has been, that are still not going to be convinced. I, I just don't think they're going to change their mind. And, and um, it's unfortunate, but I also respect that. I, I think that that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the way things are. And, and, and it, there, there's, no, there's no forcing somebody to be able to change their mind on that issue. Um, but I think there is this very large middle group that I think had been Sort of watching things from the sidelines, that that now over the years ha has been able to see. Well, you know, th there's a lot of benefits that could be able to come from uh, from building this telescope in terms of bringing in more STEM jobs, uh, being able to uh, obviously encourage the exploration of the heavens, which is something that is uh, culturally significant. I think not just for Hawaii, but for uh, the, the rest of the world. Um, and uh, and it's just a it's it's a great opportunity. So so to me, I, I think what you've had is is the, the shift that I see is that I think there's going to be more people that are now favoring um, seeing the, the telescope go forward. Could be wrong, but but I, I think that's, that's and it's, probably the it's case. an ongoing issue that we'll deal with. And I hear you saying that we, we'll we'll have to talk about it, and there may not be a way to change minds. Right. We'll just have to work with. Work with right. It somehow. Right. I, I think more minds have been changed. I don't think you'll ever get to a unanimous place, um, and that's okay because that's that, that's kind of what what Hawaii is all about. Is, is we we've always had a a, a large um, a range of opinions on things. Okay. We have one minute left. Okay. We've always seen you in a serious light. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Very okay. serious. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for fun? Well, last night I watched Crazy Rich Asians finally, so this, that was a big thrill okay. for me. I finally got to watch that, um, so that, that was great. Uh, so I, I like I like movies, but I bet I also I, I go running a lot. I mean, oh, okay. that's probably what helps me to de-stress the most is to, is just to be able to um, get out and go for a jog and and um, and just enjoy nature and, and enjoy everything that that is so special about the island. Okay, and uh, you know. Uh, we don't have time to ask about what you're going to do next, but... I, I guess we're out of time. We're out of time, <laughs> but maybe I can have you back sometime when you figure that out. Okay, and, sounds and, good. And talk to us uh, some that more sounds like a good about your, your next role in life. Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Governor right. Doug Chin. I appreciate you being here and sharing your, your, your opinions with all of us. All right. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, all right. Thank you. Goodbye.